This is August 27th, 1983. That's right. I'm Joe Todd, an interview with Mrs. Arley. Edie Logan. Logan. Okay. Yeah, Logan. Mrs. Logan, where were you born? I was born in Montague County, Texas. And when's your birthday? 1898. What month is today? Oh, uh, February. February the 19th. 19th February. 1898. Okay. Who was your father? John M. Ward. John Ward. Was he from Texas? Uh, no, he was, uh, he was uh, born on the banks of the Sequoia River, wherever that is. Where is that? I'm not sure. Well, I did know. But I've got all that on paper down home. Yeah. Okay. Right home. And who is your mother? Drusella Lee. D R U. C-S-I-L-L-A. Lee. And where was she from? Well, I, I, I don't know just exactly where. I really don't know just exactly where she was born. Yeah. But somewhere, um, somewhere in Texas, uh, because my daddy was a school teacher, just to give you a little back, my daddy was a school teacher. Of course, he was old, about five or six years older than she. And my mother went to school to him. And she was only 16 when they were married. And uh, mm -hmm. that's about as far as, as I remember. But I, I do know that he taught school for $50 a month. <laughs> when did he teach school? Oh, way back then. Now he was born. He was born in eighteen and eighty four, I believe. I don't know. He was uh, and was around in Texas where he where he taught most of his time. It was when the, the schools weren't up to date then. Now you say your father was born in eighteen eighty four? I believe it was 84. That would make 84. It would soon be 200 years, won't it? 100 years. 100. Oh. Uh, eight, not, no, not 18. 19. 19. 18. Maybe was it 74? Well, he was born in a different sense. Uh, I was born in. In 1890, uh, 1898. Yeah. Then, uh, well, I was the youngest of 13 children, 13 or 14 children. It was a large family of us. Yeah. Well, then how old was, uh, he was, uh, It'd be more than a hundred years, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. It only had to be, yeah. yeah. That's okay. 18 and 84. I, I think it was 18 and 84. Well, that's okay. Uh, how come your parents came to Oklahoma? <coughs> well, now, I was so small. I, I don't know, but uh, my daddy was a farmer. And uh, when they opened up this panhandle out here, of course we lived in Greer County after we moved from uh, uh, Texas. I was about four years old. And we moved down, we lived a couple of years uh, down around Granite and, and around Mangum and things like that. <coughs> then they opened up the, this uh, panhandle here to settle it up, you know. And he, he went out there in 19, in 1904. Yeah, I was six years old when we went out there. Before we went, went out there in 1904, in the spring of 1904. 
and filed on 160 acres of land and proved it up. And at that time, when Daddy was raising his family, uh, Beaver County was an awful poor county. They had windstorms out there, and they couldn't make crops, and it was dry. And uh, of course, my daddy was a farmer, and he farmed his crops just the same as if it rained. And he would raise stuff when people there wouldn't raise it because they wouldn't farm it, they'd get discouraged, you know. But uh, we had it pretty hard in, the, in those days. But he stuck it out and uh, so when, uh, uh, when uh, we got the, he got his kids all raised. Now my daddy worked in the field, sold a hundred and a hundred acres of wheat when he was seventy five years old. Didn't work. He didn't retire like a lot of them do that. And he, he just went out there because he thought he could make a, it was a better opportunity for him. He had no home. He just went down there in Texas where he was. And <coughs> he thought that he could make it better, which, which I guess he did. He, we filed up. We, we had a farm and everything. Do you remember the trip from Texas to Greer County? Yes, very much. Tell me about that trip. Well, sir. <coughs> How'd you go? We moved in the Copper Bay, and we crossed the, the Canadian down here. You know where the hell Canadian is. We crossed the Canadian River. We had our chickens and a coop on the back of a wagon, Copper Bay. We had our chuck box in there. We had uh, what few things we could bring. And we got stuck. The river was up. <coughs> and there was an old man that used to, he knew, uh, you know, the Canadian River is quicksandy. That the Canadian or the river? Uh, a Canadian, out there yeah. for Canadian Oklahoma. Okay. And, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Stand on the banks with a horse, and he knew exactly where that sand, the quicksand was. And he would uh, haul people across uh, and charge them a dollar. And that's what he done for a living. What's his name? I can't remember. John somebody. We called him Old John. And anyway, we got stuck in the river that day. And the river was up. It come up over our and I don't know how we got out, but <coughs> when we crossed that river, we was in that river all day. And those little old chickens, uh, they they washed them out of the coops, you know. And you could just see them little chickens go down the river bank. And of course they couldn't swim; they drowned But I remember I had a little old pet hen in there. That that little pet hen grounded. And I remember now I was a little. I was only about four years old, and, <coughs> and I lost that little old hen. Don't remember whether we had any deaths or not, but anyway, we lost uh, nearly everything we had, you know. But we finally got across the river. But now, mind you, we were stuck in that river putting it all day long. And there was another family that was with us. We traveled together, and uh, we got when we got out on the other side, we come on into. Uh, on a, to, to Greer County then, that's where we settled. And uh, <coughs> I remember that we, uh, we, my daddy rented a place up there. He was just a renter, and he wanted a place of his own. And uh, we rented a place up there. It's, it's called on the Old Brown Place. And it was only about, uh, not too far from Manta. And. Uh, I remember about the first felt sickness I ever had. I had a, I had to have my ear lanced, and we took it to a, we, an old country doctor, and he lanced his ear, and that that's the first remembrance I ever had of any spell of sickness. 
and that, but it uh, it was my uh, mass storage. I guess it was this here, I think, right here that it landed. Oh, it just run. It was terrible. If they hadn't gotten me to a doctor, but that that is the first doctor I remember of ever been to when I was four years old. What about crossing the Red River? Anything happen there? Well, now was it that it was out here for Canadian? No, I mean, but you did cross the Red River, didn't you? I guess we did, but yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. Where is Red River? Oh, that's between Texas and Oklahoma. That's the border. Well, I, I don't think yeah. it was Red. I don't think it was Red. Yeah, that's I, I don't remember that. I guess we crossed that all right. Okay. But I remember very well, and, and now I could be mistaken in the river. No, that's okay, that's fine. <coughs> uh, what, do you have any remembrances of Mangum? Mangum? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was the town like? Well, uh, first spell of sickness I ever had, when my sister got married, when my sister got married about, uh, she's about, uh, well, she's 21, she's married, and I was about six, six, I guess, five or six. And <coughs> we, <coughs> excuse me, I get something in my throat that I have to get up. And so she, uh, my mother was going to, uh, they were going to Magdalene to buy her wedding clothes. She made her own wedding dress. So uh, we went in the wagon. And we didn't have restaurants to eat in. That we just buy a lunch, you know. And I love cheese and crackers better than anything. I just lived on cheese and crackers when I was a kid. So we went that day, and I was sick when I went, but Mother didn't know it. I, I never would let Mother know when I felt bad. But anyway, we went, and we got our lunch that day. And uh, so I didn't eat. Uh, I, I just couldn't eat. I was, and Mother said, to well, there's something wrong with this kid when she doesn't eat cheese and crackers, but I didn't eat anything. So anyway, we come on home. And as we came home, I was starving to death for a drink of water. And uh, so we stopped at a farmhouse, and they got me a drink. And so a bunch of children in on that, you know. And you know, you take the measles from the fever. So uh, they got me, they got a bucket of water and brought it down to the wagon. And I drank the first drink, and then I drank the last drink. I had to drink the first thing and the last drink. So when my brother started, the one that weighed a pound and a half, and he started back to the, take the bucket back, Mother said, Charlie, don't let those children drink out this bucket step. There's something wrong with them. They used to call me baby. Baby here, and she says, uh, I don't know what it is. She probably nothing says, but I don't want them to be so. So the first thing they done, the kids grabbed, uh, grabbed that bucket uh, of water and drank out of the dipper that I had drank out of. So I got on home. Mother put me to bed. And so. What she did to break the measles out was give me a hot tea. And the next morning, I was broke out. I looked like a turkey egg. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was in bed a few days. And come to find out, every one of those kids come down with the measles. <laughs> and so I said, uh, well, I said, well, I don't know where in the world this kid got the measles. But anyway, we used to have a, a young man there that I was just crazy about him. And every time he'd come over, I'd sit on his lap. And so when he'd come over, she said, that, John, she said, that Artie's got the measles. He said, I don't know where in the world she got them. He said, well, I'll tell you, Miss Ward, where she got them. He said, I was taking the measles when I come over here and sat, and Artie sat on my lap. So that's where I got the measles. That's the reason I know you can take the measles from the paper. And uh, that's, uh, then, then Mangum was, was our hometown, you know. 
and we'd go there when we wanted to do any trade. What did the main street of Mangum look like? It's just a wide well, street now. I don't know what it looks like now, but then it was just a just a wide street. Just a, that's about all it was. Two of us. Street paved. I don't remember. I don't believe it was because back in those days, when I was a kid, the streets weren't paved. They were just, uh, they were just uh, dirt road. Do you remember seeing any Indians? Yes. Tell me about it. Well, we used to have, uh, <coughs> uh, they'd have Indian celebrations there. Yeah, mainly? Uh, yeah, I think there was lots of Indians around. There was somewhere around in there. And uh, we'd go, uh, we love to see the Indians. And uh, I expect that they did knows more about it than I do. I just have a faint recollection. But they, they dress up and they do love to dance, all of those Indians. And uh, we'd uh, go lots of times and watch them war dance. They called it the war dance, you know. And, but I never had uh, much, uh, uh, too much record. Uh, of course, I know, uh, I've been around the Indians a lot, but I don't know them like a lot of people do anymore. What did their costumes look like? Well, I just can't hardly. They yeah. just sometimes they just something wrapped around them, and sometimes they have on pants and and they, they, But I just when I was a kid, I just love to see those Indian stands. Mm -hmm. As as uh, this little lady here on the door, she I think she'd make a she'd make a good war dancer, <laughs> and uh, so that's about all that I remember about the and, you moved to the Panhandle in 1904. In 1904, yeah. my daddy. Did you moved by covered wagon again? Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's, tell me about that trip. Well, I'll tell you. We moved in a in a in a covered wagon with an overjet. Had our bed. With a what? Overjet. What's that? Well, it's it's a a big tent for concern, and you put it on the uh, you put it on on just a regular wagon. And it comes out about that far. About a foot? A foot, or maybe a foot and a half on each side. Then you have a bed in there that you sleep on the top bed. And then, uh, as us kids, uh, Mother always made us a bed uh, underneath, you know. And so we moved out there in that. Uh, let me see if I lost my train of thought. No, and we moved out there. And he lived in that a long time until my daddy could build a house. And you know what kind of house he built? Sod house. You ever see a sod house? Yes, ma'am. And I was reared in a sod house. Later, my daddy put on a one or a plank hook. And we thought we were going to town then. And uh, <coughs> we'd go to bed, and one of my brothers was with me. Well, he was a great singer. And after he'd go to bed overnight, way along in the midnight, you could just hear him singing, you know. And uh, then we had, the, then my daddy built uh, a cellar, a great big cellar, that mother kept her food in after we got established and raised a garden and stuff. And uh, then when my daddy would butcher hogs, now is this out of line? No, that's fine. Go when ahead. my daddy would butcher hogs, he would uh, hang it up in that cellar because it was cool, you know. Then uh, mother would put her fruit down there. And if we saw a storm coming up, we'd run to the cellar uh, we'd run to the cellar door where we could dart in if we saw the cyclone was going to hit us. And uh, uh, there, there was this flat under the ground, and the steps you'd go down. And, uh, but we never did run to the cellar. Uh, too many times we'd go to the, to the door, you know, and in case we'd go in and we could slam, slam the door down, we'd be safe. And so uh, then uh, 
Then later, I'll, I'll, I'll get back. Then later, uh, the way we kept our milk, uh, we didn't know what the refrigerator was. I guess that was before they finished. Start with. Uh, my daddy built a sod milk house, and we had an 85 foot well that run day and night. And uh, he piped that water, he made a cement trough. And he piped that water through the cement trough and run it on to our garden. That's the way we irrigated our garden. And uh, then uh, uh, mother would keep her milk and butter in there. And that's the way we made our living yeah. when we first went up. So we butter for 20 cents a pound. Mm -hmm. And uh, we raised garden stuff, you know. Uh, but, uh, I was raised back in hard times, Mr. <laughs> now, how large was the sod house? It was about... Uh, was it as big as this room? Yeah. Oh, no. No. It was about, let me see. I imagine about a 10, 10 by 12. 10 by 12 feet. Yes. We put the, we had the trough on one side and run the walk through it. Then this other side, we had our separator. And, uh, now that's the sod house that you kept your butter in. Yeah, that's the sod house. And then when we butcher, my daddy would butcher his hogs, and he he'd, uh, he'd saw cure his meat, and he'd hang it up. Yeah. And oh, we'd have the best hams and we'd bacon and stuff like that. We didn't buy stuff, uh, mm -hmm. Mister. When we we wasn't able, we didn't have the money. How big was the sod house you lived in? Well, it was about 14, it was about 14 by 16. And on the east side of it, we had a shed room we made out of a lumber, you know. It was our kitchen and dining room. And the sod house was our living room, our bedroom, and it was our all room. <laughs> and, uh, then when my daddy built this other house, or this other room, while well, that was one of our bedrooms and our nice living room, and of course we thought, we didn't have no porch. We didn't have porches then. And uh, we didn't know what a porch was. What was the roof made of in the sod house? Dirt. Was it dirt? Yeah. Uh, out just out of the earth, out of the grass, out of the grass, you'd find a solid piece of ground. And we'd have a sod cutter. It makes it looks about, about that Six, long. eight inches wide? Eight, eight, about eight inches wide and about a foot long. And you take that and cut it, cut it. You'd have your sod cutter and you'd have a horse to pull it, you know, and cut the sod out. And then the, they'd cut it in two. Then that was put together with the what we called, it wasn't cement then, it was chip. We put it together with chip. We let it just like, like you would lick, you know. And then it was covered uh, flat uh, uh, over top, you know, with tar paper that kept it from making and then you'd spread tar over that. But we had an awful time. How about the rafters and the roof, what were they made of? Well, they were just made out of two befores and things like that. Just it lumber? Was, it just, just an oval shape, huh? yeah. just lumber. Did you have sod on top of that? Huh? Did you have sod on the roof? Sod on the roof? Yeah. No, we had tar paper. That tar paper? Just tar, tar paper yeah. and tar paper, yeah. you know. Okay. And then, of course, uh, when they got the wall up, well, they'd, they'd have to put something there to, uh, they'd fasten it down with the sod, you know. They'd, we'd have to have something there to, uh, to uh, nail the roof on, and they put the uh, two before along that uh, side there, you know, mm -hmm. and so place it down some way. Did you cover the inside walls with anything? No, we covered the inside wall a uh, lot. Like we covered it with, we whitewashed it with jib, this jib, and put it on the sand. How do you and make it? What, what's jib made of? Well, it's kind of a clay, white clay. And, and you put a little sand in it. And then we plastered. But then finally we got to where we, we just, we would paint it, you know. 
paper was most anything we could get, you know. <laughs> and so now that was a kind of a home that I was reared up in. But I wouldn't change it for <laughs> for my life now. Yeah. I wouldn't change uh, it. As a little girl, what kind of chores do you do around the farm? What kind of chores? Yeah. Sir, I'll tell you, we had a big herd of cows. And uh, I think 21 or two, three heads. And I, as a little girl, after I moved to Beaver Town, I milked cows just like my family did. We milked And uh, we milked cows. I'd feed the pigs. I'd pull weeds. And uh, uh, just anything that uh, I could do. That's what I did. And I'd get her the eggs. We had chickens. And I'd get her the eggs. And I, I washed dishes. And when I was seven years old, when, now my mother was a good cook, and she taught us girls how to cook. So one morning, and I love to clean the house. I just got to clean the house. Are we taking too long, Mother? Well, Mother, I've watched you too many times, and my mother never was a particular about it. She'd take a pinch of soda, she knew just how much to take. She'd take some salt, and she had buttermilk, she'd sip the flour. And I said, I've watched you make biscuits. And, you know, <laughs> not begging, but the biscuits was really good, Miss <laughs> Roy, at seven years old. And Mother said, what is this? Babe, I didn't know you could do this. And I said, well, I just thought I'd try it. It wouldn't, wouldn't be much wasted. And I've always loved to cook. I just love to cook. And I had cooked all my life, and I had fed a lot of people. But that was some of the things that I did. And uh, now, I never did like to sleep too well, but I would sleep. Yeah. And I'd make beds. And, uh, Ever do any work in the fields? Oh, sir. I jerk broom corn. I jerk, you know what broom corn is, don't you? How do you jerk broom corn? <laughs> well, it grows up. How tall? <laughs> well, we have the giant, and then we have the dark, and then we have the medium. Yeah, how tall is the giant? Oh, it, it, it's high as you can reach almost. What, eight, ten feet? Oh, about seven or yeah. seven feet. That's it. <clears throat> so it's raised with a blade. It's, it's got a blade. It com comes out just like a maze head, you know. You know what made it Then it, there's different uh, there's different grades of broom corn. And uh, uh, the gar, sometimes it'd have heavy, and sometimes it'd have sprangly leaves, you know. But we never did like that. But it, you'd have the blade this way if you're right-handed. You jerk it with your right hand, or if you're left-handed, you, you jerk it. Well, you jerk it with both hands. You'd get a hold of the blade and, and the thing that held it, you know, and you'd give it a big jerk and it'd just crack off by the thing. Now, what do you, you, you talk about the blade. What exactly is the blade? The blade is the, is the, is the stalk that is, and the, okay. the head is the, is the broom corn. Yeah. And the blade is the, the stalk that comes up behind it. And, uh, well, they know. But anyway, and the broom corn, you, oh, you jerk and the broom corn. Then when you when you jerk it, you break down some stalks and throw it down in the middle. 
usually take, uh, you take two, well, one takes one row and one takes the other. Break it down, put it in the middle, and let it dry. And when it gets dry enough, then you take it and put it in big shots, about like that. Yeah, about two, three feet. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. And then let it finish mature. And if it rained on it, why, well, if you had to see it rain because it would mold sometime. <coughs> then when it got dry, you'd go to the broom corn field and you'd pick them things up and this is all you could yeah, carry sure. in your hands. And I've done that. And you you take that then and put it on a wagon. And it was a dump wagon, you know. You put it on there. You put the, the ends one way, one end one way, and the other side, the end the other way. You put the heads together. Then when you take it and dump it, they dump that and drive off from under it. And it, you'd make your record. And oh, I saw, I've got some pictures, broom corn pictures that. Uh, oh, you do? Oh, yes. If you'd like to see them sometime, I will. Yeah. When we'd go to Bailey's, we'd, we'd call the bear there, the baby, and the cedar. <coughs> and you'd put that broom corn on a table, and you'd shuffle it around, you know, you'd, and put it through through the cedar and take every bit of the seeds off. Then they take and put that in the baler and bake it and tie it just like it would cotton. And uh, then it was ready for market. And <coughs> my daddy had sold a mini, a ton of room corn for $50. You know how much it takes to wait a, a time, don't you? <laughs> but anyway, the head is what they may actually make the broom out of. The, the head is what you make the broom out of, and they're the best brooms there is going. Now, is that the tassel on the corn? Is that what makes the? Yeah, the, the when, when the uh, <coughs> when the broom starts to head, then it starts with these little straws. It starts with straws, you know, and then some of them have a. a a joint, I guess, or a, a, what do you call it, the bottom end, about like that. About some of them have four inches. Uh, yeah, and that's what makes the broom uh, that makes the corn, and that's what you make the broom out of. I just love a good broom corn broom, and you can't have it. You know what they sell for now? Six, five, and six dollars a piece. And. Uh, that's, uh, now you grew this in the panhandle? We grew that in the panhandle. Yeah. Uh, the panhandle. Now where was the baler located? Well, the baler was located. Under what town? Where was it? Oh. Uh, or did it come out to the farm? Uh, yeah, they, they uh, uh, the baler was just like uh, uh, these cotton, uh, these uh, people who mow. Oh, no. The wheat? The baler is it, it, just like uh, uh, the cotton bakers, okay. you yeah. see, yeah. and they're, they're carried right along okay. with it. Never yeah. do any plow? Yes, I've rolled a cultivator, and I've uh, monitored corn, and that's, that's something that that's got discs on each side, and you, you straddle the, the corn, you straddle whatever you're monitoring, and it cuts the weeds out from it and throws it out, you know. Yeah. And <clears throat> I've gathered corn, and I've gathered cotton, I've pulled cotton. How much cotton did you pick in a day? Well, I didn't pick much cotton when I was a kid, but after I got grown, we moved down here to Auburn. And all I, if I could pull, uh, which pulling cotton, that's burrs and all. But to pick it, you pick, the, pick it out of the burrs, but when you pull it, I could pull maybe 
300 pounds. But to pick it, I'd do well if I'd pick 150 pounds in a day. Yeah. Because you have to pick it out. And, right. But you pull it, you know. And, and so, you name it, I've done it. <laughs> do you remember State of the Day? Huh? Do you remember State of the Day, 1907? When Oklahoma became a state? Yeah, I, I, I have a thing. We were, we were out. Uh, we were out in, in, in the Panhandle then. We, we filed on that before it became, mm -hmm. before it became a state, I guess. Yeah. And that was in 19, uh, and my dad did not uh, file on in 1904. Can you tell me what statehood day was like in the Panhandle? What, what? Can you tell me what statehood day was like in the Panhandle? No, I, I just don't remember. Yeah. I, I, I was just, I guess, just too small. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember things like that. Yeah. But I remember, I remember that it became a state mm -hmm. after, it was called a territory. Yeah. When, when we moved, when we moved. Right. So. Uh, tell me about the dust storms out in the Panhandle. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> And sometimes it gets so dark, you couldn't see, and it was bright daylight. And Russian Thistles, you know what Russian Thistles are? Yeah, the, the tumbleweeds, mm -hmm. Russian Thistles, yeah. yeah. They, they grow great big. And <coughs> when the wind, and it used to be a windy country. Oh, man, so you just hate to see the spring of the year come. And I've seen them Russian Thistles pile up on the fence posts. Till it would just lay the the fences down, and the sand would pile up over till you could just walk over the fences on the sand, and uh, and the, this the uh, dirt uh, it would get so black. Well, people died. People died out there. That's pneumonia. What died. is dust pneumonia? Well, it. The dust blows and it gets in your lungs, I guess. And uh, uh, in in those days, now we had lots of windstorms, but uh, when the dust storms were so bad, we had sold our farm out there, and we'd moved down uh, down to Hobart. And that's after my mother and father passed away. That was in 1930, let's see, 36, 32. My mother and father passed away, and I was left on my own. And we was living at home at that time, and I took a job. And the dirt, would blow out there till you couldn't see your hands before you. It was just that dark. Now this happened uh, when we were in Beaver County too, and and the sand blowed. It was a it was a sand plain. But I reckon uh, that that um, country has really it's it's a beautiful country now. They say I have been out there in oh many years. It's been. Eight, nine, eight or nine, ten years. Do you remember any method that you would use to keep the lamp from blowing away? What would you do? To they didn't. They couldn't. They, they, they would try to, but it just blowed and blowed away until they couldn't. And people, now, the way they did that, people would hang wet sheets up over their windows to keep that dirt from getting in their houses. And uh, as I've said, a lot of people died with dust pneumonia out there. They would get in the house and get in your lungs. And now that was in uh, 19, and, uh, it must have been 19. Uh, uh, well, it was before we moved. Yeah. It was, well, then after we came down to Hobart, why? Well, yeah. It was pretty nearly bad. Tell me about World War One. Well, sir, I I, I cannot. I, I hope it don't take too long. My brother was eligible for World War One. 
and we were thrashing, we were thrashing wheat then, and we were moving, uh, they were moving the thrashing machine. They were moving, I guess that's what you call it. Uh, they were wheat, anyway, it was thrashing wheat. So uh, they had moved, was fixing to move from one set to another, and it was about dinner time. And <coughs> so uh, the man that was driving uh, the engine, why, it, the clutch kept, kept sticking, you know. And so my brother was walking along, and he said, John, he said, pick up a, a, a handful of sand and put on this flywheel here so the soles are the cash. Well, he had on a great, it was in the fall of the year, he had on a great big coat. And <clears throat> so he just let down and picked up a handful of sand and when he went to put it on, the man started to try uh, the wheel again, and it caught his hand and just broke his hand and just mashed it. Well, he went with a crippled hand. So that exempted him from the war. But this man, uh, finally, he went to the war, and he was killed. He was about my brother's age. And so this exempted him from the war, and he never did, never did go. But, uh, I remember a lot of the boys that were killed in World War I. Of course, I was 18, I was about 20 years old then. But anyway, uh, then, uh, and, and they just, uh, they were just, you know, shot down. Uh, Did you do any work for the war effort, like any knitting or wrap bandages? No, I, I, we never did. We were still on the farm and we had plenty of, in town they did, but I don't remember ever doing anything like that. I don't know why we didn't, because I guess we was uh, too busy on the farm. And uh, I never was a much of a person to uh, be away from my parents. What about Armistice Day? Uh, Armistice Day, the day the war ended. Oh, I, I remember. Now, the day the war ended, that, that was First World War II. Yes, First sir. World War. I remember I was right here in the city. And now the whistles blew, you know. When did it end? November 11th, 1918. Oh. No, I wasn't here in this city then. No. But I remember yeah. the whistles blowing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember just where I guess but then. I, I guess I was still in Beaver County. Yeah. Still What's your favorite childhood memory? Oh, playing with dolls, playing in the mud, and we'd get out and have kids. We'd get and we'd uh, we'd make these little mud houses, you know, for little dolls. And I like to play with dolls and things like that. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, in fact, I just, uh, I just don't know how to remember. Yeah. I, I like to play black man. Uh, games and things like that, you mean, are the memory. Yeah, child. yeah, just anything you can think of. Yeah, well, I was a great hand to make believe. <laughs> well, Mrs. Logan. <laughs> I haven't worried you with all this. No, no, we have a good interview here, I think. And I don't know whether it'll be very interesting or not, but maybe it'll be outside. Very interesting. <laughs> I want to thank you.